Hey and welcome to another digidemy.com tutorial. In today's video, we'll talk about making your redshift renders a little more realistic by adding motion blur to them. Let's now talk about motion blur in redshift. Let me go to my render settings. And under the redshift tab, here we have motion blur. I turn this on. And if I come out of this, when I do a render, you see there's going to be no motion blur applied to this. You might be saying, well, of course there is none because you haven't animated anything. Well, to your surprise, I actually have. So if I go back and then play it, that's that ball falling down. I'll let this play a couple more frames. Let's say there. And it's clearly moving. But when you render, there's no motion blur. In order to see the motion blur, you need to render this to the picture viewer. You do that by coming up here and clicking on this button. Or if you're not quite ready for rendering it yet, you can come up here and click on this button and this will show you Redshift's renderer and it will just go through a bucket render and it will now show you the motion blur. So if you don't want to render to the picture viewer by clicking on this, you can click here to do a render inside the Redshift render view and it will now show you the motion blur. So now we can have a look at some settings of the motion blur. If I go to the render settings, on the motion blur, if I twirl this down, I get two options, steps and deformation blur. You can think of steps like the quality of your motion blur. So if I go and increase this, let's say from 2 to 6, render again, this will give us a cleaner result. Deformation blur refers to the blurriness, or the motion blurriness if you like, of objects that aren't moving, so the position, the scale and the rotation of the object isn't changing, but it's deforming in another way. Let's say you've applied a band deformer to it, or maybe you move the point around, and that's called deformation. If you want those animations to be blurry as well, that's when you need to turn on the deformation blur. Right now, since this is not being deformed, we don't need this. Let me show you a couple more settings though. If I go to the advanced tab, on the motion blur, we get a lot more settings here. First one is the enabled and disabled button, so you can turn this on and off. Second one is the steps or the transformation steps, which is what we saw here as well. I'll go to advanced again. The next option here is the frame duration. This will let you control the amount of motion blur. So if I go and increase this to let's say two frames, if I now do a render, that's going to elongate the motion blur. So it's now calculating a two frame long motion blur. If I exaggerate this even more, let's say if I go and set this to five, that's going to give me an even longer result if I render this. So this gives us an even longer result. The transformation steps here will let us control how curved or smooth the motion blur is. Let me go to a slightly different angle, let's say here. And if I render this once again, now you can see the ball is actually taking this curve here quite nicely. Let me go and lower down the frame duration to something a bit more sensible, let's say down to two and render again. So the blur that we get here is more curved because my transformation steps is higher. If I lower this down to let's say two and then render again, the blur, the motion blur won't be as curved. So you can think of this like the smoothness of the motion blur. We also have these options here on the shutter. It says start and end. The start option is telling Redshift to look at 0.05 frames prior to the current frame to start the motion blur and then get the motion blur to last for another 0.75 frames. So if the frame duration here is set to one, and if I render again, Redshift will now take 25% of the blur from the previous frame, so when the ball was here, and 75 of the blur from the following frame when the ball is actually here. If I set this down to let's say 0, and then 1, and render again, it's going to take more of the blur from the following frame, and less from the previous frame. And if you want the motion blur to start getting calculated from the beginning or the end of the frame, rather than being centered on this frame, you can come up and click on these buttons here, and that will do just that. The shutter option is going to be something that you won't be tweaking as much, but it's here, and that's what it does. And that's how straightforward and easy it is to add motion blur to your scenes in Redshift. Before you go, if you want to win a free, live and fully interactive course, you can enter our weekly prize draw, where you can win a five-day course normally worth over $1,000. All you have to do is to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon here and cross your fingers.
So don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.